right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Sorry about that, guys. Let me see if y'all can hear me. Okay, y'all can't hear me. All right, cool, cool, cool. Uh, let me do something real quick. Let me do something real quick. Let me see. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. <clears throat> all right, one check, my check, one, two, one, two, my check, one, two, one, two. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, let, let me know that you can hear me. Shamiria Clark, good evening. How you doing? Uh, my check one two one two Pam M in the building. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's going on? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, yeah. Somebody give me a my check. My check. Just say one or two. You can hear me. Just say one or two. Everybody stay inside the window. Yeah, it's hot as fuck. Uh, down here in Memphis, it's hot as fuck. I'm going to do your free. I had to ask something that I couldn't ask in the group chat. Okay, cool. Uh, loud and clear. All right. Um, <clears throat> all right, cool. Everybody say they can hear me. And that's what's up. That's what's up. So since everybody can hear me, um, Shamira, if you don't mind, um, DM me that after I get through with the show, okay? Because uh, when I usually go live, I don't pay attention to my phone. Uh, so if you, do, if you send it to me, I probably won't get it till later. So if you don't mind, just wait till the show is over and then send it to me, okay? Uh, but in that, guys, you know what? Uh, let me not hold y'all up. Welcome to the show. <music> What's going on, everybody? As always, welcome to the Chris Thorne Show. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you watch my content. And as always, like, comment, subscribe, and share. So uh, let me do some shout outs. Marie in the building, Pam in the building, Dar Paul in the building, Shamir in the building, What for One, Yeah, is in the building, Sylvia Huff in the building, Donna Jackson in the building. Uh, I think I said Dar Paul. Uh, who else in the building? I think I see Louise and the Queen early in the building. Beverly Palmer in the building. Uh, who else in the building? Uh, my man Ralph came in the building early. Not, not sure if he's in it, still in chat right now. Uh, Desiree came in the building earlier. Betty came in the building earlier. Uh, Queen Meek came in the building earlier. She said she'll be back. Uh, and that's all I see for right now. Everybody else, I try to catch uh, as to show progress as y'all come in. So, as, uh, guys, as always, you know, once I do a story, if I get an update, you know, I try to keep y'all updated with the story that I have done. And we have a very interesting uh, update to the story about little CJ, Cedric CJ uh, Jackson. We have a very interesting uh, update on this young man. And like I told y'all last time, and some of y'all agree, this is like, the Malia Davis case, but only is just a little boy involved this time versus a girl. And as always, it's a motherfucking ridiculous. You know what's going on with these kids? Cynthia Sifter, good, good afternoon. Good afternoon. How you doing? It's a motherfucking ridiculous of what's going on with these young kids nine days. It's very sad and it's very heartbreaking that these kids have to suffer at such an early age because of irresponsible parents, uh, like I told y'all, the biggest bullies, in my opinion, is not the people at school, it's the people at home. Those are the biggest bullies. And the kids just have nowhere to go when they need somebody to comfort them. They have nowhere to go. All right? <clears throat> so, anyway, whew. we're going to get into the show, guys. But I want to show y'all something. Before we get into this show, 
And I want y'all honest opinion what y'all about to see. So let's switch this over. And again, everybody, I want y'all to understand at one point in time, I did want a daughter. I did. But, you know, stuff like that, you got to worry about, man. And uh, I can imagine how the man feels. And I can, the only reason I'm saying I can imagine because he's a father. I'm not. So I can imagine how it feels to come in and his baby is having sex at 12 years old. At least from what you're saying right here. She was 12 years old. Stone cold in the bed. What's up, brother? Um... She's 12 years old and doing sexual activities. Um, I'm pretty much sure he knew the day was going to come, but I guess not so young. But at the same time, though, you know what I mean? These little girls nine days, they just get hot real fast. They see stuff that they shouldn't be seeing. And, all, and, and the sad thing about it is we can't protect them 24-7 from seeing stuff that they should not be seeing. We can't protect them 24-7. So some things, we're going to slip through the cracks where they are going to see stuff that they ain't got no business seeing. Amen? They, they're going to see stuff that they don't have no business seeing because we cannot watch them 24-7. But it's up to us to try our best to keep them from seeing stuff like this on TV because it's not for 12-year-olds to see. Amen. So let me read top of Christian. What's going on? How you doing? Good afternoon. Um, what up, spirit? Um, he said um, he disciplined her as he would a son. In fact, sons got a whole lot worse than than ass with. Hey, yes, yes. What's going on, bro? This is the first time I seen you in my life, man. Melissa, good back in the building. What's going on? Top of Christian. What's going on? How you doing? Not a one gamer. What's up, bro? What's going on with you, man? I be getting your notifications and stuff, man. But it's good to see you in my live. What's up with you, brother? What's up with you? Go sit down. Go sit down. We'll get you a chair and sit down right there. We'll get you a chair and sit down. Parker Lynn, what's going on? How you doing? How you doing? Parker Lynn in the building. Um, yeah, so unfortunately, we can't protect our children 24-7, and some things that they're going to do, we are going to slip through the cracks, and they're going to see some stuff that, you know, we're not intended for them to see, you know, but again, like I said, I can imagine how this man feel, because he is an actual father, and I'm not a father, so let me read to you, maybe this going to tell us in the video what they think about it, because they... How they put it in the article, he brutally beat her. I don't think he brutally beat her, but they put it in the article, he brutally beat this girl. And I hate some tiny articles that they, they exaggerate shit. That man ain't brutally beat her. Hey, I got my ass whooped like that if I did something wrong. He didn't brutally beat her. Brutally beating her to me if he would whoop her ass with a stench cord. Now, that would be brutal. But this was a belt, and she just pretty much got a normal ass whooping. Amen? So why, this, why, they, why they trying to say he brutally beat this girl? Come on now. What is he supposed to do? What is he supposed to do? Pat on the back? Nah. Nah. So how you gonna say he brutally spanked this 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 uh, uh girl? Jesus. <clears throat> but anyway, here's what it said, guys. It said a video has service of a father brutally spanking his daughter on July the 18th, which was two days ago. Uh, V103 Atlanta's Instagram page posted a video. In the video, an unidentified father is shown beating his daughter, beating her, really. How many of y'all believe that that was beaten? Seriously, how many of y'all believe that was beaten? I don't think that was beaten at all. But maybe y'all think different. How many of y'all think that was beaten? Um, what is it? It's shown beating his daughter with the belt. He allegedly caught her having sex. He allegedly caught her having sex. Man, I can imagine how they, what his eyes saw. I can imagine. Um, while spanking the crying girl, he asked, do you want to be a hoe? I kind of figured somebody was going to bring it up, you know, that he's saying it or whatnot. Uh, me personally, I can see where some people have a problem with him saying that. But then again, I don't. Because she has to learn what you're doing. This is what these type of women do. 
So I don't have a problem with him using that language. But at the same time, I can understand that some people do have a problem with him using that language. Amen? Amen? Because they're looking at the kid aspect of it. Why are you talking to her like that? Why are you calling her a hoe? He's not calling her a hoe. He asks her if you want to be like that. He's not calling her a hoe. He asks her, you want to be one. That's what he asks her. He didn't say she was a hoe. Come on now. The video shed light on the issue of how parents should punish their children and they lack of discipline, although 60 countries have banned corporal punishment. It's still, it's still legal in America. Most states do not have a definite standard for what crosses the line when it comes to punishment and abuse. According to a study by the University of Texas at Austin that was published by Journal of Family Psychology, Volume 304, June 2016, there is no evidence that spanking was associated with improved child behavior. Yeah, I mean, now with that, I can understand where they come from. Because whipping somebody don't mean they going to improve in their behavior. Sometimes it makes them want to go do it again, even worse, because they feel like they shouldn't get disciplined for their actions. So I can understand where they're coming from on that one. I get that. You know, um, where was I? Uh, however, the study revealed that spanking can be associated with an increased risk of 13 de detrimental outcomes. Uh, okay, they ain't talking about nothing right there. Okay, well, that's all they're saying on there, you know, but I got a feeling there's going to be more that's going to come out to this. You know, somebody going to try to say, you need to get him. He's a bad father, you know. Put him behind bars. He shouldn't have did that. He should have did that. And I say to you, no, he did. I think he did what he's supposed to do as a father. Now, as far as him putting on social media, now that's the part that I don't want to stand. Why you want to put this on social media? I don't know. I mean, everything is not for entertainment. It's not for entertainment, at least in my opinion. All right? So uh, that's my thoughts on that story. Bianca Dianca, where is where is she learning their behavior, huh? Blanco De Negro, Blanco De Negro, if I said that right, thank you. That's why I said earlier, stuff we have at home and stuff that we do at home, a lot of times we are not careful. And kids see stuff that we think that they don't see. So, you know, that too, I've got to mention that. Thank you. I've got to mention that. You know, where did she get that from? Exactly. You know, so... Uh, so what y'all think about it? Do y'all agree with what I said, or is it something y'all disagree with? And I'm gonna end this recording. I'm gonna end this one right here. All right, so I'm gonna put it up as a separate video. We got that recorded. So what do y'all think? You know, do y'all agree with what I said? I mean, do y'all think different? Uh, do y'all have a problem with him putting it on social media or, I mean, what do y'all think about it? You know, I, I mean, like I said, the discipline part, I'm with him on that. I'm with him on that. And they saying, and I hate the term that they using brutally beating their girl. No, he did not. He did not. Cause that's the case. Then all of us been brutally beaten. If that's the case, we all been brutally beaten. Shit. Melissa Good said that he beat the boy. Well. Apparently, the boy is not his son, so I guess he didn't touch the boy. He didn't touch the boy. I guess he left that to the boy's parents. You know, uh, I guess he leaving that to the boy parents. Uh, thank you, Spirit. Of, uh, I don't know how to say that word. Thank you, Spirit. That's what I want to know. Who was filming it? Who was filming it? Was it her mother or was it his girlfriend? Who was filming it? And why did they agree to film it? I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, I will put that up as a separate video. So everybody go take a look at that. Once I put that up. So all right, let's get into the real deal. What I'm here for right now. Right now, I'm here to bring out an update on uh, baby CJ. Uh, as we know, the, uh, the people who don't know the story, let me give you the meat and the potato of the story. Uh, baby CJ was reported missing. Um, the aunts, the aunt who had care for the boy with CPS put him in her care. Uh, the CPS put the boy in the aunt's care. The 
the young boy got a hold to some ketchup packages. If I remember the story right, he got a hold to some ketchup packages and he made a mess. And Cedric Johnson threw off the handle and the turn to you, he swaddled the boy, uh, wrapped him up tight until all night. And when he tried to uh, release him from the grip, you know, the boy started throwing up. He was becoming unresponsive. He claimed that he did CPR for 30 to 45 minutes. And he said once the boy was unresponsive, he took the boy and dumped his body in uh, a dumpster. And they found the baby boy body in the landfill. What a piece of shit, huh? Well, like I said when I did it the first time, something's going to happen to the auntie. But that was a terrible mistake that she did, leaving that boy with that man. All right? So uh, but don't let me spoil the story for you. Let me let y'all see it y'all So let me switch this back over. And uh, let's let y'all hear what's going on. A little boy found dead in a Rowlett landfill is now facing charges of child endangerment. Crystal jo Jackson was arrested by Dallas police this morning. Her boyfriend, Cedric Johnson, is already in custody in connection to C.J. Jackson's death. Johnson is charged with injury to a child, serious bodily injury. The 18-month-old was reported missing last week while in his aunt's care. She initially told police that she put the boy to bed around 11 p.m. last Tuesday, and when she woke up, he was gone. Police say the boyfriend later admitted to them that he put the boy in a dumpster. Jackson is being held on a $35,000 bond. Y'all heard that? <sighs> Cedric Before, Jackson the of a little boy. was the boyfriend of the auntie who was caring for uh, so young all... CJ. That was the boyfriend. And... Shedrick, his name, dumped the boy body in a dumpster. And they found the boy body in a landfill. How about that? How about that? What a piece of shit, right? What a piece of shit. But like I always say, men, I'm on your side as much as I can. But when you participate in something like this, I can't be on your side. Wrong is wrong. Wrong is wrong. If you to harm a child like this, you know, doing some fuck shit to a harmless child, I can't rock with you. But I ever though, I told y'all that I believe the aunt is going to get in trouble too. And she has. She has. I want y'all to listen to this. Who was looking out for this little boy? His tiny body was found in a landfill last week and now his aunt, the woman who was supposed to take care of him, is sitting in jail. But you know what's messed up here? Police say she wasted 19 precious hours when they possibly could have found the toddler alive. Yeah, Matt Howerton's been looking into this. She wasted 19 hours lying to the police. Lying to the police. Mm, 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 mm. Matt, Matt, what what happened during those missing hours? Well, it's all laid out here in these arrest documents. And simply put, for nearly one day, police say Crystal Jackson lied. She told investigators that someone abducted little CJ here overnight. But in reality, inside her home, he suddenly needed medical care, but never got it. The day is July 11th. No one has seen 18-month-old CJ Jackson for almost 24 hours and his aunt, his guardian, Crystal Jackson, told police and WFAA someone abducted CJ from her home overnight. We all love that baby. He was just the sweetest little baby. But investigators now say she was lying and that CJ may still be alive if it weren't for her. After Jackson's interview, CJ was found in a landfill. Her boyfriend, Cedric Johnson, arrested. 
He told police he swaddled CJ before bed, but did it too tight, and that when the little boy started throwing up in the middle of the night, he became unresponsive. When things didn't get better after Johnson did CPR, he told police he drove CJ to a dumpster and left him inside. He wouldn't do that! Jackson denied it all and stuck to the story she told police. But then the FBI got involved, and when a special agent started asking Jackson questions, her story changed. Investigators say Jackson admitted to knowing CJ was gone hours before she reported him missing and that she told Johnson and five other kids in the home to leave before she called 911. And here's the worst part. Jackson's arrest documents reveal a bombshell. Her boyfriend apparently did not say that CJ was deceased at the time he discarded him in the dumpster. And were it not for the actions and omissions by Jackson, CJ could have been located did y'all hear that? The boyfriend never said that he was dead. He never said that he was dead. But I mean, I mean, I don't know how much of an effect they would have on his case that he never said that the boy was dead. Because, I mean, regardless of what, but if he said he was dead or not, he's still a piece of shit. You know, so I don't know how much of an effect he's going to have on the story. But I'm guessing what it's saying is yeah, he was still alive and she played along with the shit. In the boy's death. I guess that's what they saying. Hey, Muggy, how you doing? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Come on in with your alternate accounts, dude. You know how you do it. <laughs> you know how you do it. Potentially alive. Jackson was booked on a child endangerment charge. Her legal battle now begins. And so does the road to justice for this little boy. CJ's father and the brother of Jackson told me today he didn't want to comment that all of this was too much. He added that the family is still working on CJ's funeral arrangements. I'm gonna tell y'all something. Usually, uh, when stories like this, when you see the uh, when the child is in the care of the woman, nine times ten, she probably got something to do with it too. You know, but society looks at a lot of women and say, hey, they can't do this. They can't do no harm. At which that's a fucking lie. I don't know where they got there from. And then society said that the child is always better off with the mom. Where well, that's the case, then and you should never have an option where the mom can give up their child for adoption. Um, so how is it can society look at and say that the child is better off with the mom where half of these brothers can't even take care of their own damn self? Half of these mothers can't even take care of their own damn self, but society says that the child is better off with the mom. Well, we we know now that's a lie. And he wasn't better off with the auntie either. I don't get it, ladies. I know sometimes y'all get a man and he make y'all feel like, again, he make y'all feel like that he the only one that wants you. At this day and the third, it's a mind trick. Some of y'all may fall for it. But when it comes to these children, don't nobody come first but their damn child. Now, this woman left his child with this dude, and he got a history, a criminal history record, which I still don't understand how CPS missed that. Because they claim that they thoroughly checked backgrounds of everybody that's living in the home, other than the fact that people are saying to me that his name is not on the lease or anything like that. I guess that's the only way he slipped through the cracks. Or maybe he wasn't there at the time when CJ came to the home. I don't know when this man came into this woman life. But by her leaving the baby there with him, this is what happens. Irresponsible. Irresponsible. And matter of fact, I think he got charged with child abandonment. Don't know if she know that or not. She probably did, just probably overlooked it. Because she got her a man now. Right, Cash? Left his child in the house to go get some blunts. And 
and sat here and lied to these folks for 19 hours. Keep her police from finding her nephew. She lied for 19 hours. Again, a motherfucking ridiculous. A motherfucking ridiculous. All right, so here's what it says. People, it said, aren't live for 19 hours, keeping police from finding her 18-month-old nephew. Potentially alive, Warmer says. Uh, mercy, they kidding our future. Yes, yes, Melissa, good. Exactly, that's exactly what they doing. Crystal, Crystal Jackson, 27, faces a felony charge in connection with her nephew's death. She claimed the toddler was abducted at night, triggering an Amber Alert. Now, I want to know, did she really think he was abducted, you know, or was she recovering this shit too, you know? Both of them just a piece of shit. Just a piece of shit, I'm telling you. Um, the aunt of an 18-month-old boy whose body was found in the landfill reported lied to police for hours, preventing them from finding the child alive. According to arrest affidavit, Crystal Jackson, 27 years old. She didn't look 27 to me here. I would have gave about, I thought she was 40. She looked like she about 40, but this girl, 27 years old. Uh, 27 was arrested Wednesday morning on a felony child endangerment charge a week after her boyfriend was accused of harming a boy. She is accused of lying for hours about what happened to her nephew, Cedric C.J. Jackson, on July the 10th. Jackson claimed C.J. had been abducted from the Dallas apartment. The missing child report triggered a statewide Amber Alert. The toddler's body was found in a Rolette landfill a day after he was reported missing. A police affidavit Affidavit indicates that CJ might have been alive when Jackson's boyfriend, 27-year-old Cedric Johnson, took him from the apartment and put him in a dumpster. Johnson faces a felony charge of injury to a child in the boy's death. Had Jackson been truthful with the police sooner, law enforcement has every reason to believe the complaint, the complainant could have been located potentially alive within hours of his removal from suspect Jackson's residence, according to arrest warrant affidavit. Johnson, Jackson's boyfriend, told police that the boy was unconscious after being tightly swaddled in a blanket at the foot of the couple's bed, police records show. He said he started routinely swaddling CJ after the boy, after the boy once made a mess in the middle of the night with ketchup packages. The man said he didn't want the child getting up during the night or quarter to an arrest warrant affidavit. Jackson initially told police she put her nephew in a bed around 11 p.m. and that the boy was gone when she woke up in the morning of July the 10th. She later said she woke up in the middle of the night to find her boyfriend and nephew missing from the apartment. A search warrant for Johnson's cell phone indicates Jackson claimed she called him to ask where he was. The boyfriend told police that he woke up around 12.30, July 10th, when a toddler started making noise. He said the boy started throwing up after Johnson unwrapped CJ from the swatter record show. And there goes Cedric, punk ass right there. The toddler was unresponsive and didn't wake up after Johnson performed CPR. The man told police, according to affidavit, he dropped the boy in a dumpster in northeast Dallas. Police said the dumpster had been empty twice before they found the body, the boy's body in the landfill. It's unclear if the child was already dead when he was thrown away. The affidavit for Jackson's arrest says the aunt lied to investigators about who was in the house, who was in the home during the time that toddler went missing and lied about how long she knew CJ was no longer in the home. Y'all hear that shit? She lied to the investigators about who was in the home during that time. The toddler went missing and lied about how long she knew CJ was no longer in their home. Wow. Wow. Trying to protect your boyfriend. He must have been really laying a pipe trying to protect your boyfriend. Right, Cash, you were six other kids in the house. 
that they removed. Cash, uh, come on, uh, come on, hang out with me. Uh, let's talk about this together. Cause I think you cover this too. You want to do that? I like for me and you collab on this real quick. You want to do that? Thank you, Muggy. Appreciate you. And again, people's story like this, I mean, it just made me so glad that I don't have any children, man, because I've been lost my motherfucking mind. I'll be in jail for life, fucking with folks like this, who knowing shit going on with these kids and ain't doing shit about it. Thank you, Shamira. I don't think it was Swatter. Uh, okay, she said she's on her way home. Okay, then. Okay. I got you, dear. I got you. Um... And with the history that he has, you trying to protect a dude like that, let alone date him? What kind of woman is you? Seriously, what, what kind of woman is you? Who are you? I hear you want to say this shit. What kind of woman are you? She said this story is bullshit. She knew everything, and now I'm trying to blame it all on him. It don't make sense that she seen they were gone in the middle of the night. What, the, what did she think he was doing? Thank you. Thank you. Both of you was in a home when this happened. So, man, look. Well, guys, okay, we got a timeline here. Let me read to you what the timeline says. At 6 18 on July the 10th, Jackson calls 911 to report someone abducted her nephew. Okay, Supreme said we can. She said it won't take long. Well, just let me know. You, well, let me know when you get home. Let me know when you get home. Six eighteen on July the tenth. Jackson calls nine one one to report someone abducted her nephew. Wow. All right, Shamir. Another bring the boys. Thank you. At 4.35, Jackson repeats a story about a juvenile in the home reporting a man took the boy in the middle of the night. Are you fucking serious? Are you fucking kidding me? 4.35, she reports a story about a juvenile. Okay, Queen Meek, you be careful out there because it's hot as hell. I think you in Tennessee too. 4.35, she repeats a story about a juvenile in the home reporting a man took the boy in the middle of the night. Are you fucking kidding me? And then come to find out you was in the home when all this shit went on? Five seventeen on July the 10th, Jackson finally admitted that two other children were home at the time of the alleged abduction. Three minutes later, 520 on July 10th, Jackson says her boyfriend was also in the home. Six o five, July 10th, Jackson tells police she crawled over Johnson when she noticed CJ was missing. She also tells police that she told Johnson and five children to leave the home before she called 911. Y'all hear that shit? She told them to leave the home. What the fuck? Now, for those of you who were saying this was set up, sound like it is now. You told these folks to leave the home. Then you called 911. What kind of sick son of a bitch is you?
Jesus. You plotted your story. Which means you knew what the fuck was going on. Wow, this is nuts. This is nuts. 11.45, July the 10th. Jackson is interviewed by an FBI agent. She changes her story and says she realizes CJ was missing at 5 a.m. Wow. What I say, people, what grandma and grandpa used to tell us back in the day, once you tell a lie, you got to keep telling lies to cover up the other one. You got to keep telling lies to cover up the other one. You got to keep telling lies to cover up the other one. You got to keep telling lies to come up the other one. What's up, we Annie? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Glad you make a live show. When you tell a lie, you got to cover that. When you tell a lie, you got to cover that. When you tell another lie, you got to cover that. When you tell another lie, you got to cover that. You got to keep covering up your own fucking lies until you finally got to come out and tell the truth. One thirty a.m. on July the 11th, Jackson changed her story again and said she woke up at 2 a.m. July the 10th and saw the toddler was gone. Two fifteen a.m., July the eleventh. Johnson tells investigators his story about how he unwrapped a toddler from the swaddle and dumped him in the trash. And it says down here at the bottom, Jackson lied to law enforcement for approximately nineteen hours. Regarding the amount of time she knew the child was missing, says an arrest warrant affidavit. Hey, Elaine, what's going on? Wow. CJ was put with Jackson after he was removed from his parents' custody. After the toddler's death, six children were taken from Johnson and Jackson's home and put in foster care, said officials with Child Protective Services. Two girls, six and eight, are the couple's children. The other four are Johnson's officials, said after Johnson's arrest. Jackson said he wouldn't do this. She remains in Daly County Jail in lieu of $35,000 bail. Jesus. Jesus. Okay, Queen, let me see. Um, let, let, let me, let me, um, let me see if I open up a hangout. Mm. And if you want to, Queen, you can put in your community wall and uh, let people know me and you collabing. You know, if you want to, that's on you. Uh, hold on, guys. Let me see something real quick. Hold on. Let me see if I can remember this. How do I do this damn thing?
Can I do this? Wait a minute, I should have been go up here. Okay. And how do I find you? Let's see. There you go. And I think uh, no, it doesn't what I do. Hold on. I understand what I'm trying to do. Hold on, I'm not trying to do it. Shut up, man. Let's see, how do I do this shit again? Okay, I found you, but what do I, how do I do this? Hold on, Quinn, I think I gotta call you in, but this ain't the way I usually do it. I forgot how I usually do it, but let me, let me see if it's gonna call you in. Okay, says you on baby. I don't know if you ain't got the call or not, so uh you probably gotta end up calling me back. Oh shit, I ain't trying to do that again. I ain't trying to do that. It's some way that I usually do that shit. No, she said not. Okay, it's not ringing on your side. Oh, it's some way. I, damn, how do I used to do this damn thing? If you post on that, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do, uh, Queen. I'm trying to get it to where uh, I could post the link to you. It's somewhere I used to do this shit where I could I can go to the actual thing itself and I can get a link and I can send that link to you, but I can't find it for some damn reason. Okay, I don't see it right there. Damn. How I used to do this shit. Cause I did it with Okay, you say you I just got some say that you're here. Okay, what the hell? It's not a. It didn't let me answer it. Why? Why didn't do that? It didn't let me answer it.
Hey, do it again, Quinn. He didn't let me answer it for some reason. I had crooks in the building. Quinn, try... I got you this time. You should better hear me now. Can you hear me? Nah, all I need to know is that can everybody hear you? Hey, can everybody hear uh, Queen? Say so, Queen. I'm hopefully they can hear you. Can they say something? Say, mic check or something. See if hey. they can hear you. Mic check, mic check. My camera's messed up. I didn't fix the settings, but salute to everybody in the room. Okay. Hey, Fire Goddess, how you doing? Uh, somebody saying I started buffering for a little bit. Y'all let me know if y'all can hear her. I might need to change mics. Could y'all hear her? She said mic. She did the mic tech thing. Could y'all hear her? Okay, Fire God said she heard you. Now, not me. I need to know if y'all hear her. If y'all heard her when she did the mic check, did y'all hear her? Yeah. Okay, Dog Paul says she heard you. Uh, what the hell? He didn't went right back. Anyway. Go ahead, Queen. Yeah, okay. Uh, so you did this story too, dude. You know, I'd like for the people to hear your uh, thoughts on this as well. So, and I think you touched on this story. So, you as a woman, man, what do you say about this shit? What's up? I think it's crazy. <clears throat> However, you know, we've seen this a lot in um the stories that we've been looking at, where moms is like, or aunties, whatever. In this case, are lying for their boyfriend. Like the D is just that important to, you know, fail a child over. It's it's sad. I think that this lady knew right away when I seen her response, to Crystal Jackson, I knew that she was lying. Mm -hmm. You know, she's sitting here and doing all this extra stuff. It just did not seem believable at all. Right, exactly. Exactly. I think she she should be charged in the murder just like um him, you know, not just child endangerment charges. I think it needs to be more serious than that. Absolutely. And I think it's a sad thing that um, cause I, like, what I say on my streams all the time, you know, women be the main one they like to tell us as kids that we would get in trouble. Rhea, now you taking us out of this world, you know? So I don't, I don't know. I'll, do you think a lot of women, I'm going to ask you as a woman, do you think women just having children just to be having to try to keep up with people? Or is it, is it just for a beneficial thing? Do they really like children or are they doing it to keep a man? I mean, what the hell is really going on? Because it sounds like to me, she wanted to keep him versus the child, you know, which I don't know how CPS missed everything, but maybe you could tell me this something about the CPS thing. Well, I believe I, um, from my research, I knew it appeared that CPS was aware that Cedric Johnson was in the home. Mm -hmm. um, so that the detectives, she had told detectives or detectives were feeling that there was no Body in the home at a certain point, just Crystal and the kids, and that's not true. I, I do feel like there's like an incline of women that are just having children because you know, if you allegedly if you have a man's child, then you know that might help him stay there. But mm -hmm. I think like now women are oh these type of chicks because these chicks are not women. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> they. They um, feel like if they have a man's child or whatever, they be that down ass chick, excuse my French, but um, they do them type of things, then, you know, that man gonna stay there. And in reality, a lot of men just ain't feeling that. If if you walk into a home and you just see that a woman ain't taking care of her kids, she ain't taking care of her house, then a man is gonna treat you that way. Mm -hmm. you know, a real man, he, uh, uh, but most of these, Tatayinas, that's what I call them. They out here looking for men that have no understanding. People are just having children just to have children to be looked at like I'm a mother or I'm this and that. And it's sad. Mm. You know what I mean? I, 
grade, I was abused as a child sexually and physically. Oh, wow. And, Sorry, dude. Mm. Yeah, and it, I, I feel like this situation started when, like, I was younger. You know what I'm saying? Or we were younger. But it's just ramped up more because now it's just, like, sex is everywhere. Women are being told that they're not shit in these rap songs. Mm. And they're conducting themselves. Like, everybody's trying to be a bad B instead of being a real woman. You know, I just don't understand it. Right, because I think it's more to it than just calling yourself a father and calling yourself a mother. Anybody can label themselves as a mother. Are you doing the necessary steps to uh to be their father and their mother? And uh, for what we're seeing right here, this woman didn't do the necessary steps. Now, uh, maybe you can enlighten me. Did you find out any information as to why Cedric was moved from the biological parents? What was going on with that? Because I haven't seen anything. Can you say that one more time? You glitched a little bit. Okay, sorry. I say, uh, did you have? Do you have any information on? Because uh, I haven't seen any. Why was little CJ removed from the biological parents? Do you have any information on that? Because I haven't read anything on it. Okay, well, from what I what I researched, there's not like much information on this portion. But the mother was having some issues, like you know, I don't know, with her living situation. Or whatever and she just thought that she couldn't do the right thing for cj and she wanted time to get her life together mm -hmm. now i salute her for if you're a mom and you can't do it with your child and you have a family or friends whatever that will take the child or something you need to do something because mm -hmm. if this mom kept cj and failed him knowing that she could not provide for him you know whether it was something that she had to get together whether it was a job an apartment money whatever um I do commend her for coming forward. You see what I'm saying? But in reality, Crystal Jackson had temporary custody of this child because the mother wanted to get her life together. Mm. You know, I think that's sad. I don't know if the mom, I mean, I didn't see really any emotion from the mom either, but that, that was kind of weird to me too. But I do commend her for that, to know that you cannot do right by this child and you're trying to do something. But maybe mm -hmm. Crystal one, you know what I mean? Mm. Mm. But we it. often hear we often hear of women that, you know, they're overburdened and they act out because they're overburdened. So that's the only reason why I commend the mother in this situation, the biological mother, for that portion. Now if we find out later that she was involved some way, this was all planned, like a family type mm -hmm. of event. I'm kind of on the scale of my foot. I got my toes over there <laughs> on that side. You know what I'm right. saying? Just out of, of everything. Like when the mom was talking about it, she was just chill. You know, it just mm -hmm. did not seem like there was a lot of emotion. But as far as what I know, again, she reached out to CPS to let them know, you know, basically she found a home for her son temporarily so she could get her life together. And that did not pan out. You know, obviously, because Crystal felt her son. And I don't know how this woman was sleeping in the bed with this child, and the child swaddled. And she's just like, oh, whatever. And this man was giving CPR. Now, Chris, I don't get you. I know you a man. You a real man for real. I respect you 100%. I've been watching your channel before I even started commenting. You know, I got to. Oh, for real? Up. Appreciate it. I yeah, appreciate I it. <laughs> no, I do that. I watch on the big screen TV and shit. Got you. Like, I sure appreciate it. But, um, yeah, this, you know, we already know that the Cedric Johnson guy is not a real man because who would swaddle a child over ketchup packets? Thank you. You know, thank you. Where were these ketchup packets at? We're talking about an 18 month old child that does not like stepping up curbs. So why would he get on a chair so that he could get some ketchup packets off the table or the counter or whatever? Mm -hmm. You don't swaddle an 18 month old child. You do that to like a newborn baby or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Exactly. It, I'm going to tell you what I think what happened. Uh, and ladies and gentlemen, this is Cash Me Out Queen. Uh, you can go check out our channel. Uh, she do the same thing I do. We both talk about the news. And I'm humbled to have her on the show. We uh, Was it the story before we collabed on or was it something else that I seen before we collabed on? It was this one? Well, it happened. It happened. How about that? It happened. Uh, Queen, this is what I think. This is what I think what happened. Okay. Cedric, if you watch the judge with by his character... He don't look like he much of shit, and I know, and I, and I know that we we're not supposed to judge people by the by the the, the outward appearance because it really don't 
say much. But if I was to judge his out of appearance, it's like he ain't much of shit. He probably don't work and don't do shit. But this one I'm thinking, he probably was lazy that day, didn't want to do nothing, didn't feel like being bothered. And you know how we get sometimes, you know, we tired, we don't want to get bothered. So, like, if we try to rest up, the little sound trigger us. But that's up to us to keep yeah. our emotions in check, you know? Because yeah. we have to think, you know, we was a child once. We got in the shit, and we can see how our parents feel when we got in the shit. But he got so frustrated that, you know, he just took all this anger out on him. Now, maybe CJ probably did get into a lot of stuff, but again, he's a baby, so he's going to do that. But it's up if, he, if he's in your care, you're supposed to watch him, you know? If he's getting in the kitchen and doing all that, then the best thing you need to do, if you're trying to get some rest, bring him in the room with you, close the door. Because we, when kids can't get out of the room, they, they eventually go either watch TV and fall asleep, you know? They're going to eventually watch TV, watch TV but go, go ahead, go ahead. And he should be sleeping when the child sleeps. Oh, shit. My boy, truth out loud in the bed. What's up, bro? The little truth. You don't just sleep, you know, stay awake all night and then know that you got an 18-month-old child to wake up to. Amen. And get frustrated at them because you have to do what you got to do. I'm sorry. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, that's what I think he was, man. You know, he was tired or he was just being lazy. He didn't feel like doing nothing, you know. And by CJ getting in today, he just got pissed off. And, you know, he like, I fix your ass. Because if I'm not mistaken what we read, he done this before. And this never happened. But see, they go to show you, you may get away with it the first or second time. But trust me, after that second time, that shit going to come back around in just a matter of time. And your dumb ass got caught. You know? Yeah. Now, do you believe he got it, got it, young boy, CPR? You think he, do you believe he did that? Oh, Chris, that's what, saying. that's what I was saying. Now, you a whole grown ass man. Okay, mm -hmm. there is no way that even you, you know, could give a person, a child, a person CPR for 30 to 40 minutes, 45 minutes by yourself. What would need to take place would like, let's say a child falls out, me and you, Chris, we're here. Right. So one of us is doing, you know, CPR while the other one's on the phone. When the one that's on the phone um, doing CPR gets tired, we switch. Bam. Yes. Because something you have to keep the repetitions going exactly just, thank you thank you a little and then you know play around so there's no way and then to look at i'm i'm not trying to judge him you know i have face tattoos but he just does not look like the man the type of man that went and got any type of cpr training mm -hmm. you know again man left his four-month-old child in the home so he could go get blunts hey, thank you thank you, know, you. this and that did another family member we don't know if it was a child. I don't. I don't know. Do you know if it was a child? The child, the the person that he assaulted in his family. Uh, I think they say it was his child. I think it was. Okay, but I just know it was a member of the family. So you got assaulted and all that. Like you're, you're not. He, he. There's no way that he did chest compressions for thirty to forty-five. Minutes. I don't think he did either because uh, you know, I work with uh, special needs and uh, that's one thing that we we got to train in is uh CPR. And you are right. You know, once you get tired. Somebody else take over to the ambulance, get there. So you're absolutely right when you said that. So uh, I don't think he did it. I think he already knew what was up. And I think he already knew that boy was unresponsive. And he panicked or whatnot. Or him and this woman, since we find out what we find out now, cockaded the bullshit to get away with this boy's body. And yeah. I guess his conscience was eating his ass up. And he finally admitted that he did the dirty deed. Now, why this woman talk about he wouldn't do that, he wouldn't do that? You did all this fucking line, just come back around and say, okay, yeah, he did it. And then on top of that, for what it sounded like, you had something to do with it as well. I mean, how can you live as a woman knowing you had the power to birth another human, but going to hide the fact that this man, even like I said, he must lay down pipe. You want to take up for this man for hurting your nephew. It's sad. It's sad. I, there is no pipe in the world that is that serious to mm -hmm. me where I'm going to tell any child, whether mine or anything. And I have three children. Hey, Shawnee Boo. Mm -hmm. ain't, no ain't no way in hell, Chris, that I'm going to, like, you know, put a dude. Like, if I think that Crystal knew about it. I think mm -hmm. that she at the time that these alleged CPR things were going on, but it was no CPR. In mm -hmm. reality, I feel like they were like, damn, what we gonna do? Um, I think that he did, you know, flip out, 
you know what I'm saying, about not having sleep. Ain't no telling. They both looked like they was partying. And did the aunt get arrested in the same outfit she did the interview in the other day, Chris? Because when she was arrested in that intake video, it looked like the same exact outfit when she was on there acting like she was so concerned about this child with the fake mm -hmm. emotion. That little right. Fake time. Right. And I'm no. I just really think in reality, I think that yes, um, he flew off the handle. She may have already been asleep. He must have woke up to the shit and then, you know, just started abusing, you know, this child. It, it could have been a shake. It could have been a punch or anything. It had to be something crazy for him to not, if he, if the child did wake up responsive, for him, somebody to not call the ambulance and try to get this child help. Exactly. Like, you're going to jump out the window, like, down 19 flights of stairs or whatever to throw a child in the garbage mm -hmm. like it, it doesn't match up you know what i'm saying it exactly exactly and like i said uh the whole thing is uh, a crock of shit you know the whole story crock of shit now you the lost probably about to lose your damn children uh the ones he had he probably lose them you know because uh and you had to ask the question, you know, is it really worth it because you were so lazy you didn't want to get up and um see about the child that he was getting in and shit. You know, I, I just don't get it. I just don't get it at all. But uh Queen, thank you so much. I just wanted your intake on this. Thank you as a woman. I thank you so much there for coming on the panel. You got any last words, so I give you the flow. Thank you. I love your show. Salute to everybody watching. Much love, Chris. Thank you. You dear. are much love. <laughs> <laughs> Stay fighting for these children. I, I salute you so much. And the fact that you don't have kids and you're doing it, it's nothing but love, nothing but support here from me. I appreciate it, babe. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Bye, right. y'all. Right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's a uh, cash me out. I am Queen Supreme. Uh, it was an honor to have her on the show. That was pretty cool to have her come in and put her input in as a woman on this story because it is a story. Uh, Son of said my, 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 my daughter's birthday is today. I have your picture, really. By Monday. All right, dear. Well, tell I say happy birthday. Happy birthday. Y'all be careful and y'all have fun. Y'all be careful and y'all have fun. You know. So um Yeah, guys, you know, um you heard it from a woman mouth herself. This is crazy. This is just this disgusting. This is disturbing and everything in between. And I think it's a damn shame that a woman would sit up here and want to take up for a man who ain't shit home and children just to keep him around it's a motherfucking ridiculous a motherfucking ridiculous and a motherfucking ridiculous but anyway guys i mean that's the story of, that's the update of the story of baby cj uh, let's hope baby cj get justice for what has happened to him and uh both of them need to get what they deserve but i got a feeling Somebody gonna get a less harsher sentence. I got a feeling the man gonna get the harsher sentence while she get off. I just got a feeling that's that's gonna happen. I promise you I got a feeling that's best it's gonna happen, but I hope not. But I got a feeling that is what is gonna happen. Amen. So uh rest in peace to uh baby CJ, uh justice for baby CJ. Um if I get time later on, I'm gonna do that story about BDIs because I wanna get that story out. You know, that that one right there, she's disgusting too. Um, so yeah, if I get time tonight, I'll probably come back live tonight and uh do the story about BDI's. Um, she's out here. Right. Really. Thank you, Chris. Thank you all. All right, Shana Poo, you be careful, dear. Um, nah, yeah, uh, uh, we and yeah, I don't think he did either. I don't think he did either. Yeah. But in there, though, guys, you know, uh. Yeah, thank you, Cashmere. That was so cool. Thank you, Derek. Much love to you, sweetie. Much love to you for joining me uh, to talk about this tragic, crazy, trifling-ass story. All right? Well, Nick, guys, y'all take care of yourself and each other. Try to stay cool because down here in Memphis, it's hot as fuck down here in Memphis. And I'm trying to stay in the house as long as I can. You know, it's hot as hell outside, you know. But other than that, though, if I get a chance, I'm going to come back again live. We're going to talk about BDIs. If y'all don't know who BDIs is, go to my community wall and you will see who BDIs is. I think a lot of you waiting on that story because that woman, she nasty. She nasty. Jay Dizzle in the bit. What's going on, brother? That woman is nasty. So, all right. But uh, I will catch y'all later. Peace.
Peace, peace.